Some years ago, a World War I veteran who'd lived to a ripe old age wrote a book called A Fortunate Life. And most of that book was about the, his younger years. I believe I've had, up to this time, and I'm 81 now, a very fortunate life. Everything hasn't gone smoothly, of course, but it's been a wonderful journey. And when I compare what I was like as a child compared with what I am now, well, I would have had no idea, even at 25 or 30 years of age, being able to do the things that I've been able to do now. I was a pretty shy kid, a little fellow, second smallest in the school. I can remember being asked along to the headmaster's office once with another fellow called David Middleton, and he was a, even smaller than me, to be measured and worked out, these little fellows. And I grew up thinking of myself along those lines, to a certain extent. And so, when I joined the Navy and found that I was as fit and strong as everyone else, even though I was little, and at 20 years of age started going to the gym and built myself up, become very strong, very strong for my size. I could, I could lift about twice my weight over my head in those days and did lift 400 pounds off the floor. So, even though I was still fairly small, and still am, I was strong. But that was a physical thing. In the mind, I was still shy. And I remember in the Navy, people used to say, I remember an instructor saying, take your hand away from your mouth when you talk, Tom. And I don't know why I used to do that. And then... Around about 33, all that back began to change. And at 36, when I joined Toastmasters and began public speaking, learned about public speaking, then I became very confident indeed compared with what I'd been as a younger man. And now I look back over my life and I was just looking at some figures lately. I've been a guest speaker 858 times. I've spoken to audiences, small and big. One in Hong Kong, 700 people, and entertained them for maybe 40 minutes. To be able to think that I could do that as a child would never, never have occurred to me. How we change, how we grow in the years, a fortunate life, yes. Married, 57 years. Three wonderful children. Four wonderful grandchildren. Plenty of adventurous life jobs. Navy, civil aviation, different countries, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand. Antarctic Expeditioner, all of those things. And all of those things before I was 41. From 41 to 59, well, didn't like that very much. The work, boring office job. And a stressful one over the last few years. But at 59, when I took voluntary re redundancy, things started to look up. I thought, well, I'm not even 60. I don't know how long I've got to live. But I knew I was pretty fit and well. And so I launched myself into various things that I'd always wanted to do. Writing a lot of books. And I have written a lot of books. A lot of essays, a lot of letters. Ended writing competitions 
entered public speaking competitions, done so many things, and still more things to do. A fortunate life indeed. And I think it comes down really to a philosophy of life, a philosophy of lifelong learning, growing intellectually, growing in wisdom as the years go by. But more important than that, the spiritual side of things. I never accepted some of the things in the various religious organisations which I was exposed to as a child. Fortunately, not a lot of them. Not a lot of exposure there. So I took my own journey, looked into various religions and took up meditation 31 years ago. And I've developed a life philosophy and I know something very important. I know that I am not my body, not my mind. I am a soul, an immortal soul. And you are too. Knowing that, working from that concept, that you are an immortal soul, having an earthly experience, will make a big difference in your life. It certainly has in mine. So, keep that in mind. You're not a physical body. You're not the mind and beliefs that you have. You are you. The same you that looked out of your eyes when you were a little boy or a little girl of two and three years of age and as a teenager and as a middle-aged person and as an elderly person. That part of you never changes. The I am, the I am is what you are. It's what we all are.